Welcome everyone. My name is John Abraham and I'm a professor of thermal sciences at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota. And thanks for listening. In this presentation, I will be um, responding to uh, a recently given speech by Lord Christopher Monckton. He's a well-known uh, denier of climate change. And I will go through his slides and show screenshots of his slides and I'll respond to his presentation in a way typical of how a scientist responds to information. I hope the presentation I'm going to give is clear, concise, and if there are any questions or comments or requests for references I'll be happy to provide those and I'll pro I will provide my email address. Just a bit of a background, Christopher Moncton gave a presentation on October 14th at Bethel University in Minnesota, and he's a pretty compelling speaker. He's very eloquent, has a wonderful way with words, and uh, gave a pretty convincing speech. And after viewing his presentation, any reasonable audience member would have a number of conclusions, and specifically climate risks aren't as seriously serious as we've been led to believe, and there's a bit of a conspiracy. And if you believe what he's following conclusions, the world isn't warming, sea levels are not rising, ice isn't melting, polar bears not threatened, ocean is not heating up, and there's no ocean acidification. And finally, uh, Christopher Moncton talked to, uh, extensively about scientists lying um, and uh, gave the inference that there's a bit of a conspiracy. So I'm going to address these issues in my work here. So who am I? Now, I'm a professor of mechanical engineering with a specific skills and knowledge in heat transfer and fluid mechanics. I've published a number of journal papers and conference papers and I've got some patents. In, I've listed here some of the journals and conferences which I've published. And my areas of expertise include, as I mentioned, heat transfer, which includes both radiation and convection and conduction. Those are the modes of heat transfer which govern climate change as well. Fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics governs the flow of air in the atmosphere and water in the oceans. My doctoral thesis was on convective and radiative heat transfer. Radiation is the m main means by which we get energy. We get radiative energy from the sun. So taken together, uh, I've got a pretty broad background to comment on the topic of climate change. Just because I publish these papers and just because my area of expertise is, is closely aligned with uh, the study of energy and the climate, that doesn't mean I'm right. But it does provide some background on, uh, uh, on my area of expertise and, and I hope it shows how it fits in with the topic at hand. So who is Christopher Moncton? His degree is in classics and journalism. He's been invited to speak to our Congress as a climate change expert, and a link to his testimony is shown here. In addition, he's the chief policy advisor for an organization called the Science and Public Policy Institute, which we'll hear about later. He has not written a single peer-reviewed science paper on any topic. Now, does that mean that he's not justified in having opinions on climate change? No. Uh, just because he doesn't have a technical background in uh, climate science or its related subtopics, that doesn't mean that he's necessarily wrong. But nevertheless, you want to think about people's expertise when you evaluate their um, testimony, particularly when they're at odds with almost every major scientific organization. Just to begin, if you listen to Christopher Moncton, you'll find out that he his conclusions differ from almost every major scientific organization, and many of them I'll list in my own work here. So what is it that he knows that they don't? I mean, how is it that he has access to information which really overturns the general understanding of climate change? My feeling is that Many of his statements sound absurd, and if they sound absurd, they probably are, which is what we're going to begin our investigation on. This is the first slide of Christopher Moncton's, which I'm presenting, and you can tell, you'll be able to tell that these are Moncton's slides because of the insignia in the upper left, 
and also I annotate the slides. Here I say CM slide 3, that stands for Chris Monkton slide 3, so it's the third slide from his presentation. And this slide shows a bit of a grainy picture of Sir John Houghton, a well-known and respected climate scientist. And in Chris Monkton's words, he says, uh, we're all going to lie. And then he takes a quote which reportedly comes from Sir John Houghton. Unless we announce disasters, no one will listen. So the question first comes forward, well, did John Houghton really say that? Let's take a look. So just to recap, on slide three, Christopher Monkton asserted that John Houghton stated, unless we announce disasters, no one will listen. So one of the questions is, did that happen? Uh, there's a problem. Uh, as far as I can tell, it didn't happen. And let's see why I've come to that conclusion. So I wrote to John Houghton, and he replied to me very clearly, indicating he had never issued the quote Christopher Monkton used. In fact, John Houghton sent me some newspaper clippings which covered this story. Here's one newspaper clipping, and here's another. And you can see here, this is from The Independent, February 2010. In the upper left, you see a picture of Sir John Houghton, and in the middle, you see a picture of Christopher Monckton. So, multiple people have investigated this and found that that quote never occurred. All right, so let's get on to the next topic, which is presented in Chris Monckton's slide number eight. And here's an image taken from that slide. This image deals with projections of sea level rise. And Chris Monckton uh, is talking about the sea level la, and la is his way of pronouncing lie. So it's the so-called sea level lie, and he talks about the IPCC's projections of a six, mil, a six centimeter sea level rise from ice sheet melt. Whereas Gore projected a 610 centimeter sea level rise, and Gore, of course, is off by a, a factor of 100. Now this is a big deal because, I mean, six centimeters of sea level rise um, in 100 years. What what's the big concern with that? And so what we want to do is we want to investigate this slide and the IPCC and see what was really stated. Just again to recap on slide eight. 27 minutes into his talk, Christopher Monckton compared Al Gore's estimate with, of sea level rise with the IPCC. Then he suggested that the IPCC's predictions of 6 centimeter sea level rise from ice sheet melting shouldn't be a concern. And it's greatly overestimated by Al Gore. So let's look, in, let's look into this in some detail. I mean, this is a good point. Why should we be concerned about some measly six centimeters of sea level rise? What's the big deal? Well, if you read the IPCC, uh, they include sea level rises due to all kinds of effects, primarily a thermal expansion of oceans as the water heats, it expands and rises. And their projections are for 20 to 50 centimeters of sea level rise due to, well, again, primarily that contribution. Um, so it's more than the six centimeters that Chris Monkton indicated. Now, granted, it's due to all the causes of sea level rise, not just ice sheet melt, but it shows that the sea level rise is higher than the six centimeters. And secondly, though, the IPCC does acknowledge that there is a great uncertainty here. And in fact, on page 409 of Chapter 5 from Working Group 1 of the IPCC, they state, and it's shown here, important uncertainty as to whether discharge from ice sheets will continue to increase. This would add to the amount of sea level rise, but quantitative projections cannot be made with confidence. So essentially the IPC is saying, hey, there could be greater amounts of sea level rise due to ice sheets, but we can't quantify it, so we're not going to include that in the increases in our analysis. CC, chapter 10, page 818. They do explicitly discuss the potential instability of the West Antarctic ice sheets. In fact, they list five to six meters of sea level rise. And so we now see wh where Al Gore got his numbers. Al Gore's work reflects the uncertainty of climate scientists and the potential that this West Antarctic ice sheet could melt. So we see that Al Gore really wasn't as off base as Chris Monckton might have us believe. 
But let's go on. Let's find out what other people are saying. Stability of ice sheets. Here are two papers. Full citations again are given. The first one published in 2007 in the journal Science, uh, talking about ice uh, climate observations and projections. And the second one also published in Science in, more recently in 2009. And here are some quotes right from those papers. Here the first paper talks about the observed uh, contributions of sea level rise is small, but it's increasing rapidly. And the IPCC may have underestimated the change. That's a pretty clear quotation right from that paper. And here's another quotation from that second paper talking about the future instability of the West Antarctic, Antarctic ice sheet. And we'll continue with this theme. Here's a Nature 2009 paper, and a quote from that paper is shown here, again, talking about vulner vulnerability of ice sheets to warm, uh, warming of the globe. And here's a quote from the 2005 paper, again, talking about uh, ice, sheet, uh, ice sheet levels and sea level rise. So what you can see here that these scientists are certainly concerned about climate change and the sea level rise associated with ice sheet melting. And I'll cover just one more. This is a very recent paper published just this year in Science. And a quote taken from that paper talking about the West Antarctic ice sheet. And they explicitly talk about the impact this finding should make for policymakers. Just so you can be sure I'm being Jake here, he, I've shown a screenshot of that first page of the journal paper and I've highlighted some of the relevant text in red. All right, so we'll move on to polar bears now. Here's an uh, image of Chris Monkton slide 11, the polar bear's law, and he's referring to um, this issue of whether or not polar bears' survival is threatened with global warming. So here is the next slide of Chris Monkton's presentation, and he refers to a paper by Monet and Gleason published in 2006. In that paper, they found four dead polar bears that had washed up after a storm. And the point Chris Monkton's making is, hey, you know, bunch, a couple polar bears die in a storm. Why should we be concerned about the entire polar bear species and global warming? I mean, aren't we really making a mountain out of a molehill here? Just to recap, on slide 12, Chris Monkton referenced a paper by Monet and Gleason that referred to four dead polar bears that really essentially died in a storm, giving the inference that, you know, why should we worry about Polar bears die in a storm. That happens all the time. This doesn't necessarily mean global warming is occurring. Here is the paper. Uh, it was published in Polar Biology 2006, and a quote right from the paper discussing drowning-related deaths as related to the regression of pack ice. Well, let's take this a step further and ask the author what he says himself. So I wrote to Charles Monnet, and he wrote back saying his published work suggests polar bears may drown under decreasing sea ice, and he doesn't believe Chris Monckton read his work or work of other prominent polar bear biologists. So this goes to show that the scientists actually working in this field disagree with the conclusions Chris Monckton has come to. Even the scientists that Chris Monckton used as a reference disagree with him.